So for the last month, I've been using Fire Dragon as my main web browser because one, I wanted to see how it would react, and two, I wanted to see if it was actually lighter than like some of the other ones that I've been using. So when I first like I I've had Fire Dragon installed for a while. And for those that don't know, Fire Dragon is actually the default web browser that comes with Garuda Linux. So it is the, it's a down the line fork of Firefox, but so it's Fire Dragon is based on LibreWolf, which is based on Firefox. And Lib so what Fire Dragon does is it takes oh LibreWolf's settings and makes it more daily driver user sensible. And it adds its own search instance and Hoogle instance for your search engines. So when you go into your settings. When you go into search, you basically have there the Hoogle and oh, search instance there. You can they add in the local searchs if you really want to there, or what have you. So you've got like a local Hoogle and search instances. But of course, being as it's based on Firefox, you can add your own search engine if you really want to. And that's basically what I've done here. So, and uh, the biggest difference that I found between this and LibreWolf is the fact that it doesn't like wipe your search history after between sessions. So I've had like multiple tabs and I have it set up to open stuff up and whatnot. So of course it's based on the latest Firefox, which means it's got like those big goofy tabs by default. So, I had been running with that for a while. And then it's like somebody was showing off their Firefox that they were using. And it, somebody commented, it's like, no compact tabs, I am disappointed in you. And so I sit, sat here and looked for the compact mode. I believe that's what it was. Let me double check. Uh, da, 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 tabs. So I'd looked for the compact tabs setting. Let me try and find that again because I don't remember what it was exactly. But I want to say it was the compact mode is the setting that you use. And yeah, HP printer stuff, sorry. Deal with it. <laughs> yeah, so it would probably be the compact mode up there. So if you look for... I just searched for compact mode in the settings, and then it came back, came right up. So you just look for compact mode show and set it to true, and then restart the browser and you've got tiny tabs again. So it doesn't take up like half the screen for just the tabs. Even though like the thicker tabs have a lot of information, it for those that have smaller screen real estate, it can be kind of cumbersome. Um, so another important thing about Fire Dragon is Garuda is an Arch-based distro, and I have not been able to find Fire Dragon in any other Linux distros, really, other than the Arch-based ones, because you've it's in the AUR. The stuff for it's in the AUR. You get install that. It's in the Chaotic AUR, which I think is where they recommend installing it from if you're installing it from anything else. So being as... I'm running an Arch-based distro. It wasn't that hard to install for me. So, and this was, again, a test to see, like, 
how differently does it run, how broken is the web. There are some like quirks that I've noticed with things in it that I haven't had in like Chromium based browsers, which is interesting. But part of that could be chalked up to some of the plugins that are installed by default as well or add ons. So if we go into add ons and themes, so it comes with three add ons built in. So it's got clear URLs, which basically removes tracking elements from URLs that you click and whatnot. And you block origin, which if you don't know what that is, I don't know where you've been living, but yeah. So along with having a nice like default dark colored theme, it also includes dark reader, which basically darkens up any page that you go to, even if it wouldn't like if it would be light by default, it'll darken the background up. So if I go to like sxmo.org, which is normally like a white background, it'll darken that up. You go to the source, you go to like source hut, dark background, and it actually looks decently nice. I'm not going to lie because there are some sites that have dark mode and it's like, I think the... Dark mode plugin has a slightly dark reader plugin has a slightly better theme for dark mode than some of these sites do. And of course, some things. Uh, that's not it. So some sites may not look as nice. You're gonna have like some odd artifacting because it's modifying CSS to do it, but. For the most part, it's going to be okay. It's just you have to deal with like odd st looking stuff, which I mean, for the most part, I've gotten used to. So the so one of the big things is oftentimes I'll sit there and like if I am just like wanting to flatline, I'll have like YouTube playing and like be playing some game otherwise. And so what I noticed with the difference between Fire Dragon and some of the others that I've used is Fire Dragon is a lot lighter uh, when playing video. And so I can actually play a game and a video at the same time and not have too much trouble with the lag and sharing of video resources. But it's nothing like running it in MPV instead where it's basically like as light as can be. Because if you run it in MPV, you're basically like smooth sailing for the most part if depending on your video content so it's not as light as mpv but it's lighter than like free tube and some of the others in that respect so i could go in here and open things up and like i said um dark reader i think is quite a bit nicer than some of the others so one of the other settings that it has Oh, on is the autoplay. So, I mean, I haven't taken the time to change it, but when you're sitting there gaming and you've got a playlist going, I found that so for between the each video in a playlist, if I'm listening to a playlist, I have to click play on every on it every single time. It doesn't automatically load. So. You can change that setting. I haven't done that as of yet, but um, that is one thing to be aware of is there are setting issues that way. And for the most part, everything works like I said. There have been a couple small quirks that I've run into. So like some of the sites that I would go to, it's like the input doesn't work exactly the same because you're running on a different um, JavaScript and web engine framework. So that turns out to be interesting. But if you're one of those people that is also a developer, then it's really helpful to have something like this because it shows you what it looks like in some of the, in another browser other than like the 10 million Chromium based ones. Because once you install Chrome, you're basically setting up to uh, placate to 90% of the browser market because 
pretty much everyone uses some Chromium-based browser for the most part. The only exception I think outside of that would be something like, oh, Pale Moon or Basilisk. So those two would be your like only exception because they have their own web engine completely. Oh, and it does, it, what was it? It's got an HTTPS always mode on, only mode on. So yeah, that's a thing. <clears throat> So yeah, <laughs> I spelled it wrong. But I mean, that would be your only exception is like a couple other smaller browsers that aren't out there. But between Fire Dragon or Firefox and Chromium, you've basically got your whole web figured out. And Fire Dragon actually works pretty well for a lot of things. It still, like I said, it still has its issues, and because everything is going to be targeting Chromium, you're going to run into that as an issue. Because even YouTube sometimes still has issues. So, yeah. That's the only downside, is sometimes you run into those interesting quirks. But it's been a good experience so far. I've, like I said, I've daily driven it for like the last month, and it actually hasn't been that bad. I just really missed my tab stacking, but I don't miss the um, resource hog that Vivaldi was. So I I'm still kind of torn. Like I still open Vivaldi for a couple things because I didn't transfer all my data over into Fire Dragon. But other than that, I it's mostly been th this and um, opening Cute Browser for a lot of things too. So because Cute Browser still hasn't quite gotten to the point to where I feel like I can like daily drive with that, but it's still a place where I have a lot of things logged in for like restream and whatnot. So yeah, if you found anything informative, helpful, whatnot, you know, you can let me know with like by feeding the algorithm and whatnot, and I will see you guys later.